Hi everyone, Daniel from Homegrown in Australia. So I've been asked to do a quick video on the Keg King temperature controller and thought I'd share with you um, my thoughts and experiences with the device and how I use the device. Um, maybe before I get started, probably worth just calling out, um, the kegking.com.au website um, has the device on sale at the moment for about $52.95. Uh, I've got no affiliation with these guys, but just to give you an idea that it, it's just um, a relatively inexpensive way of controlling your um, fermentation um, using a fridge and a little temperature um, heating belt. So um, the website has a video on it, how to use as well, um, along with some instructions. Um, you can find a link to the instructions on here. Download the instruction manual here, click the here, and um, that effectively takes you to some instructions. So, um, you know, some useful information on the instructions. Probably, firstly, it's only IP20 rated for the housing, so probably don't want to be splashing this thing with water. Um, there's um, very simple instructions in terms of basically how to set the temperature. And it's really as simple as um, pushing and releasing the set button and then using the up and down arrows to set your temperature. And we'll go through that. Um, there's also the ability to set it back to factory defaults. Um, so if somebody's had this device before you, maybe been using it for a different purpose like distilling, um, then you could basically come along and uh, set it back to factory defaults if you're having any issues. Um, I've got the Mark II model, which does have some advanced settings. So the advanced settings allow you to do things like um, changing the delay between the heating and the cooling, turning on and off, um, you know, the cooling start delay, things like that. Um, it's got some alarms, so it's got a high temperature alarm, a low temperature alarm, that are set at temperatures you're probably never going to see at minus 45 and 20 as default. Um, but you, you can um, set them if you want a, an alarm alerting to you when something's reached temperature. Um, it's also got the ability to do some more complicated um, sequential temperatures um, ranges. So you can set subsequent, but I've never used this to be honest. Um, if I want to do a cold crash, for example, um, at the end of fermentation, I just come in manually um, set that. So um, the way you access those additional settings is really quite simple. You just hold down the set key for six seconds um, until you get, um, instead of the temperature displaying, it displays an E3 up here. And so E3 is the temperature hysterious um, setting but um, then you can use the up and down arrow to go into these other functions and allow you to set them as well. So um, to be quite honest, I've, I've gone in there and had a play with it, but I've, I've never really used it um, in earnest. Really, the, the simple features uh, meet my purposes. Um, I've found this device really good, uh, quite reliable. Um, they're widely used out there and um, they seem to be liked from other reviews and recommendations. So I don't think I've got any issues in encouraging people to use this as a way of improving the quality of their um, fermentation or their end product by uh, controlling the temperature of the fermentation of their beer. Um, quickly, just to run over the back of it. So basically, there's a power cable that comes out the back that powers both the device and the units that you plug into the device. You have um, two... Um, GPO connections, one for cooling and one for heating. Um, and then you've got a white cable coming out of the back, which I've got connected just for demonstration purposes into my um, plastic fermentation vessel into a thermo well. So um, if I quickly go back to the website, for example, and um, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see they've got a couple of uh, accessories. So one's a thermo, thermo well, which retails for about $35, $36. And another one's the heating belt, which I'm about to show you, which retails for about $20. So um, both of them, I think, are useful accessories to this solution. 
So we have the temperature probe going into the thermo well. You could just sit that in the fridge and take the ambient temperature in the fridge. Um, obviously this just gives you a little bit more accuracy. Um, and likewise, you know, you could put the heat belt just in the fridge um, or you can put it around the device like I've done here, um, around the vessel like I've done here. So um, this heat belt is connected back to the heating um, GPO port on the, the power, power socket on the back of the device. And um, effectively, there's two relays. Um, you hear a click, so there must be mechanical relays in here, which is basically doing a switching between um, to switch these power points on and off. Um, I haven't got this connected to my fridge, but this is where the fridge would go into the cooling and that would turn the fridge on and off when cooling's been called for. So how do we use the device? Well, it's quite simple, there's four buttons. So the um, first thing probably to know is there's a set button and this allows you to set the temperature that you want to maintain your fermentation at. So you can see here, I've got it say set to 18 degrees. If you hold the button, it stops bibbing and it just keeps incrementing up or you can individually press to get to the exact temperature you want. That flashes um, for about six seconds and then um, goes back to the actual temperature that's being read from our little temperature sensor. So at the moment, if you noticed, I'll just press set again, I've set this fermentation for 18 degrees Celsius. You can also, um, using those advanced settings, change this to Fahrenheit. And uh, if we look under here, for example, uh, temperature units is C1. So if you held the set button in for say six seconds, um, and then you'd be able to arrow down to C1, and then you'd be able to enter in um, that you want Fahrenheit with a code of 01, and the defaults to double zero, and double zero equals Celsius. So, um, so that's how that's done. And um, at the moment, yeah, we've, as we said, we've got this set for 18 degrees, and the current temperature is reading somewhere around 20, 21 degrees. And so you can see here, 20.7 degrees, you can see here we've got this little green light on. So this little green light means that the relay in the unit has turned the cooling power point on. And if I had my refrigerator plugged into the cooling, it would now be cooling my fermentation sitting in the refrigerator. So that's effectively how that works. Um, there's about a five minute delay by default. You can change that also um, before cooling and heating goes on. So I could go in here and we could increase the, um, increase the set temperature that we want to something over the current ambient temperature. So let's say we wanted a 25 degrees or 26 degrees, for example. Um, Basically, what would happen is the cooling will turn off and then the heating would turn on. So you can see here we're still reading about 20.7 and I've set it up at around 26.6, I think, from memory. And so um, this is the cooling light started to blink. So what happens is there's a five-minute um, delay um, from memory in terms of the... Um, cooling and heating kicking in. Now, obviously, in a real-world situation, your temperatures are not going to change that quick. Um, so that, that's not an issue. So it doesn't change instantaneously. Um, so, for example, just trying to find that there. So you can see there, um, oh, is that I1? T1. T1 up near my thumb here. Delay time between heating and cooling, turning on and off. And you can set that range between 0 and 30 minutes, and it defaults to 5. So I've never changed the setting, so this will be defaulting to 5 minutes. So I won't keep the video in 5 minutes, but effectively what will happen is this green light will stop flashing um, to indicate that it's um, now out of temperature spec, and the red light down the bottom here would come on to indicate that the heat is going to turn on. So really, it's as simple as that. It's press the, it's press the set button, 
set the temperature you want to set. I'm just holding it, holding down the arrow now so I don't continuously get that beep and we can scroll through that quickly. And I'll set it to 18 degrees. And um, yeah, and it will do the rest. Plug in your refrigerator in the back to the cooling, plug in your heat if you have one, if you need one. Um, certainly in summer, I don't need to put the heat belt on when I'm doing fermentation in Australia. Um, and yeah, plug that on and um, it does the rest. Hope that was helpful. Um, I'll put the link to the website which has their video and instructions on as well. And um, yeah, give me a thumbs up if uh, that was any use. Cheers for now. Bye.